Good morning, everybody. Why don't we stand and let's worship. Remember those walls that we called sin and shame. They were like prisons that we couldn't escape. But he came and he died and he rose. Those walls of rubble now. Remember those giants we called safe and brave. They were like mountains that stood in our way. But he came and he died and he rose. Those giants are dead now. So weak that we could barely pray, but he heard every word, every whisper. Now those altars in the wilderness tell the story of his faithfulness. Never once did he fail. doing this morning. So good to see everybody. Woo! Today, 
that Jesus Christ has won so I can face tomorrow for tomorrow's in your hand all I need you will provide just like you always have I'm fighting a battle
one church. Isn't that good news? Isn't that good news? He is our victor. He has already crowned the winner. And we're on his team. Come on, that's good news today. That's worth getting out of bed to hear about today. We're so glad that you're in this moment and in this space with us to worship our victor, our king, our savior, our redeemer, our friend, King Jesus. This whole moment is about him. It's about us bringing focus in here to him so he can love on us and speak to us and prepare us for this coming week. That's what this moment's all about. And some of the ways that we can do that is we've got tables all around the room. They've got communion on them. And Jesus, he's the one that put this in play for the church. He wanted us to have something that we could touch, something tangible that we could use to remember that he's already won. And so if you would like to take communion, we've got that provided on the tables. You, there's a piece of bread there. You just rip a little piece of the bread off, dip it in the juice. The bread represents his body that was broken. The juice represents his blood. It's for you and me. So if you would like to do that, you can do that during this next song. We've got a team that have prepared themselves to minister to you. If you would like to bring prayer to God and you'd like someone to partner with you in that. Man, sometimes I just need someone to touch me. and Be in it with me. Me know that I'm not by myself as I'm bringing a request to God. And these ladies are in the back. They would love to do that and connect with you. If you would like to do that during this next song, you can do that as well. Let's, can, we, can we lean in this morning? Can we make this moment about Jesus? Can we make much of Jesus right now? Can we turn everything off that we came in here with? Just kind of close it down for a second. Close the computer, if you will. Let's lean in and let Jesus minister to us. Is that good? Father, we ask that you come and do what only you can do. Make things right for us in our hearts and in our minds. Minister to us. You said that if we would move towards you, you'd move towards us. And I know that you're doing that right here, right now. I know that you make much of these moments. You don't, you don't see it as a light thing that we would gather together to hear from you and to love on you and for you to love on us. And so, God, I already know that you make much of this, but we as a group declare it's much to us. We thank you that you're in the middle of this as we take communion. It means something to us. As we bring our tithes and our offerings, it means something to us. And as we bring our requests to you, God, we expect that you hear. Because your word says that you do. So come and dwell and be the, in the midst of this with us today in Jesus' name. Come on, church, let's continue to worship him.
God, we just thank you for your blood. We thank you that we have our shield and our shelter in you, God, that you protect us, that you are our ultimate weapon against the enemy. Thank you, God. Thank you for the blood of Jesus. We praise you. Thank you. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Well, y'all can go ahead and, before you have a seat, I want you all to greet somebody you haven't met. If you have met everybody, congratulations. Meet somebody again. We're going to take a few minutes. Kids, you're in here today. So go in the back and grab your green bags, and we'll get back to our message in just a minute. Good morning and welcome to Highway Community Church. If we haven't had the pleasure of meeting yet, my name is Tredessa and I'm one of the leaders here at Highway. Our desire is to be a life-giving church in Northwest Denver where you are known by others, the Holy Spirit is experienced, and each of us are challenged to become more engaged followers of Jesus. If you're a guest here today, thank you for taking the time to fill out a Connect card. We understand that visiting a new church for the first time can come with a little anxiety, so it means a lot that you are here. Welcome home. No matter where you are in the journey, if you want to go deeper in your spiritual growth, we encourage you to check out our church website at highwaycommunity.com for the welcome information, on-ramp videos, blogs, events, and life group details. So now that we've experienced God's presence this morning in worship, let's prepare our hearts to receive from His Word today. 
If you have the YouVersion Bible app on your phone, feel free to look up today's service on the Events tab and follow along with the notes provided. Let's watch this quick video and welcome today's speaker. Good morning. There we are. It's so good to see y'all. I'm so glad that y'all came and uh, chose to be in this moment with me. I know that you could be lots of places right now, but for you to be in this space, I honor it. I honor this moment. God wants to minister to us today. He really, really does. I'm sure y'all get sick of hearing me say that. Missy, don't you have something else to say? No, I don't. That is what this moment is all about to me. Jesus coming and ministering to us so that we are prepared for what he has asked us to do. And that's to spread the good news. That's what he asked us to do in every piece of our lives. And I want this moment to be saturated with what you need. And so I honor it and I honor you for being in this moment. So glad that y'all are here and so glad that you, if you're joining us online, can we welcome them as well? So glad that you're with us as well, and I honor you, I honor your time, and I hope that the Lord ministers to you, whether you're with us currently in this moment, or maybe you stumbled on this and found it, I believe that God wants to touch your heart and life too. Jesus is after you, he loves you, and he wants to be in relationship with all of us, and I'm just believing that God will do what he always does, and that show up when we give him attention, he likes that. He likes for us to give him attention and listen to him. And I believe he's going to give you exactly what you need today. And last Sunday uh, was Potluck Sunday. How many of us were here? That was so much fun, y'all. I love it. I love when we have potluck. You know, we are very busy people. There's a lot going on through the week. And so Steve and I were like, how can we create moments where we have touch points? Because we are so busy during the week, and we're kind of already here, so why not extend it a little bit? And so I'm so glad that y'all have jumped in. Y'all didn't have to. You could have been like, well, I got stuff I got to do, Missy. I'm not staying. I'm going to go home and eat my own lunch. But no, y'all provided a moment for all of us to connect. And listen, it's precious, and it's valuable. And so I wanted to recognize that as well, that uh, it isn't lost on me that you are jumping in whenever we're providing these moments for us to gather um, it's, it's just big. It's very important. And as you can see, Steve is not here. Uh, his, his big presence is very much missed. Steve, if you're watching, we love you and miss you. Uh, he is in South Carolina. He got to go to be uh, with some other pastors at a retreat. And he's gone a couple of years, and he loves it when he goes. And so he told me to tell you all thank you for giving him space to get away. He's made some new friends. Shocker. He was like, literally, I made some new friends. Like, well, duh. (laughs) I mean, for me to say that, it would be like, what? She made a new friend. But for Steve to say that, I mean, everywhere he goes, like every person he encounters is his new best friend. He's just that person. And I love that about him. So he's made some new friends, and he's uh, rested and excited to come back. He comes back tonight. I think he lands about 8 o'clock. So uh, y'all will have him back uh, next week. But today you got me. I'm going to bring the word today. But as Steve was looking into what he wanted um, or what he felt like the Lord wanted for us, one of the big things I know y'all have been hearing is that he wants us to learn how to be able to express to people around us what Jesus has done. And one of those ways is he, Steve felt like we should give space and opportunities for people to get up and share. And so we've had some of that uh, these last few weeks. And today, uh, before I jump into the message, um, our sweet Jen is going to come and she's going to share her story with us. And I just want to encourage us as she's coming to respect this moment. It's not easy to do this. It's very vulnerable but it's powerful, 
And I want y'all to listen. Can we listen today? Let's listen for God to say something. It's not just Jen's story. It's Jesus' story that she's telling. And so let's listen for Jesus to talk to us as Jen, come on up here, as Jen shares his, her story with us. Is that good? All right, so let's welcome Jen. Good morning, Highway. Um, if I haven't met you, my name is Jen. I've been coming to Highway about seven years. I just want to share a little bit about my story um, and God's love. I, um, I did not grow up in church. Um, I did believe in God. I believed in Jesus. We celebrated Christmas and Easter. Um, but I, I didn't walk. I wasn't walking with Jesus when I was young. Um, I was a very defiant and rebellious child from a very young age. Um, still, God works on me with that. Um, and went through a lot, went through a lot in my life. Um, by the age of 13, I was using drugs and drinking. Um, I just, there was something in me that felt like God loved everybody else, but he didn't love me. I felt, I don't know if it was a spoken or just a message that I interpreted through my pain is that he loved everybody else, but he didn't love me. And I started acting out. I began drinking and doing drugs. By the time, uh, by the age of 16, I was addicted to meth. Um, moved out of my parents' home when I was a senior in high school. And I just began living a lifestyle, um, living to die. I lived, um, I lived a very high-risk lifestyle with very dangerous people. Um, I was a drug dealer. I did lots of drugs and drinking and all of the things that come with what you need to do to get those things. Uh, keep it G-rated for our littles. Um, and I basically was, I blamed God for everything. I did not understand that there was an enemy and an adversary and I blamed him for everything. And I was set on in my defiant way is doing everything opposite of what God would want. Uh, fast forward, I had this amazing, beautiful daughter um, who was my world, and that started to change my life. Um, I decided I thought that I was already doomed, but I wanted to give her a chance at life, and so I was going to take her to church and let her make her own decision. In doing so, God found me. And let me tell you, his love, he, I was the one that he left the 99 for. He pursued me. He pursued me in big ways. He showed up in big ways when I was participating in things I shouldn't have been participating with. He kept me alive. I, there are many times that I shouldn't have been based on who I was running with. And um, he showed up. He showed up big. And I remember one day I was sitting and I was drinking and crying because I didn't want to drink, but I didn't know how to not drink. And I didn't want to live, I thought, but I knew that that wasn't my decision to make. And I sat and I cried out, and God, I heard him clear as day, and he told me, and he'd been pursuing me and pursuing me. I can look back and just crazy stories. Um, and he he said, you can do what, I, you can keep drinking, and I love you no matter what, but you can't do what I want you to do if you're drinking. And from then on out began the journey for me um, to get sober, and but God, but God, he pursued me, he pursued me, he pursued me. Um, I have been clean and sober for many, many, many years. Um, Jesus just never he saved me, and he saves me every single day, and Jesus is my everything. I love him. He is my everything, and I'm blessed. You know, I'm blessed today. I get to, I went through a lot of things in my life, um, won't go into all the details, but he's turned it off for good. I get to go help jail ministry. Um, I've helped with women with domestic violence, help people get sober and clean, um, just, he's just used me as a, I get to be a vessel for him today and to just, if I can just let somebody know how much God loves them. 
and and it's it's just I'm a different person. Literally, I died to that old self, and and I am a new creation in Him, and I'm very grateful. He's my everything. That's good. Thank you. So good. Thank you, Jen. You know, we've all got a story to tell. All of us. All of our lives are woven in as we've accepted Jesus as our Lord and Savior. It's woven into the story of God. And we get the opportunity and the privilege to display that to the world around us to let them know God loves them too. We don't have to be perfect. I don't know who needs to hear that today, but you do not have to be perfect to have a relationship with God. He did all of that for us so that we could be in relationship with him. And that's what God is trying to get our attention on, is that he wants us. He wants you and me. He wants a relationship with us. And he has fought a fight and won so that we could be in relationship with him. And so last week, Steve kicked off a new series, The Armor of God. And in his, he gave us the three R's of spiritual warfare. Do you remember what they were? Okay. Resist. That's so good. You got it almost exactly the way I wrote it down. Recognize, refuse, and resist. And if we recognize who our enemy is, it is the first step to having um, the ability to be strong in the Lord. If we are fighting an enemy that's actually not our enemy, we can't lean in on his strength. But when we recognize who it is that we're fighting, we can then lean in on God and let him be a part of it. But even though we recognize, I can see my enemy, he can be right here in front of me and I can see him. And he can throw stuff at me and me not resist it and not refuse it. And just let it happen. I can see him and I recognize you're my enemy, but I'm just going to let you do whatever. No, we need to see him, and then refuse the things that he's throwing at us. And we have been given an armor and weapons to fight this enemy that is trying to come against us. The last week was so good. If I just encourage you, if you, even if you were here, I was going to say if you weren't here, but even if you were, and you start feeling like, man, like, I feel like there's this resistance to life. What is that? I encourage you to go back and listen to what Pastor Steve taught us. Because it was very good and powerful. And so we're going to continue in on this series of the armor of God today. And so this is something we say all the time. So we're going to say it again today. Let's say this with me. I want to grow. God, you have more. And I want to know it. And we want to posture ourselves to be able to hear from heaven. And if we think we know it all, it, it blocks our ears. If I think I know something, I stop listening. And so that's why we want to posture ourselves so that get God, the God of the universe, who literally knows everything, can continue to speak to us and lead us and guide us in this thing called life. And so that's why we say that all the time around here. So how many would you, of you would say that you know that we are in a war? Like you know it. You're intimately connected to that. Like, it's not just something that you've heard, and yeah, I guess that's probably true, but you know it. And I don't mean like we're in a war with the people out on the road. I'm not in a war with the people on the road. Sometimes. (laughs) All the time, but whatever. No, we're not. Like, that's not the war. We're not in a war with the people who are trying to get the same position as you at work. That's not the war. We're not at war with people who whenever you, you know those people when you start talking, you start trying to tell about your vacation you just went on or this fun thing you just did and they stop you so that they can tell their story because it's way better than yours. You know those people? Yeah, that's not the war I'm talking about. That's not our war. We're actually not at war with flesh and blood, scripture tells us. If we're a believer and we're reading the word, that's what it tells us. I'm actually not at war with you you're actually not at war with me. We're actually supposed to be on the same side, same team. And guess what? It's not even my team. We're on team Jesus. It's his team, 
his war, his battle, and he's got a way of doing this. And he's like, come on, just kind of look in the word a little bit, you guys. Like, spend some time with me and let me show you how to defend yourself from the things that the enemy would try and throw at us. We do have an enemy. We are at war. But sometimes we kind of label it something that it's not. Or we give attention to someone that actually isn't the one we should be fighting against. And believe it or not, we all have an enemy. Every person. Like it's not just, you know, there are some people that do good things and then something bad happens to them. They're like, wow, you know, they're, they've got an enemy. No, literally every person on the planet, whether you've accepted Jesus as Lord or not, we all have this same enemy. I just sometimes forget that. Sometimes you go through life and you forget we're, we're all actually battling the same enemy. It's the same source. It's the same one. Believe it or not, we've got this same enemy. We've all got him. And we are meant to defeat him in the sense of standing in the victory that Jesus has provided. We are meant to live from there. And this me spending time with the Lord and going through this has been so good for me, y'all, because it's reminded me that I don't have to fight in the way that I think fight. I have a way that I think fight. You know, sometimes, you know, can I be honest? Sometimes I fight with, like, oh, I just, I just won't say anything. I just, I'll give you a look. And I uh, won't say anything. Just, that's not fighting. Like, that's just me being a baby. Like, that's just being, you know, like, acting like when I was two. Like, it's not accomplishing anything. Like, there is a true fighting that really will accomplish something. And the Lord wants us to know about it. He wants to teach us about it. In Joshua 10, I won't go there, but I encourage you to go and find it. It's fascinating to me. There's this moment where Joshua is leading the children of Israel to take the promised land. And there are these kings that gather together to come and fight against the people of God that are coming in to take the territory that that Jesus or that God had given them. They're coming in to take it, and they've got these kings that kind of come together and like, no, you're not going to do that. We're going to defend you and defend what we think belongs to us and keep you out. And this miraculous thing happens. God just comes in and fights on behalf of them. There are people that, uh, like, hail comes down from the sky, and, like, God is defending his people. But these five kings gather together, and they start running because they're like, "Uh uh-oh, We're losing. So they leave their people and they go to hide in a cave and they find them. And Joshua has his commanders, go get those kings and bring them out here. And bring them in front of me. Lay them down on the ground and put your foot on their neck. And Joshua begins to give this charge. Be strong. Be courageous. God is for you. He is fighting on your behalf. And as I read that story and as I think about it, that's how I feel like God wants me to do with the enemy that would come against me. For me to see that I'm a commander in the army of God, Jesus is my Joshua, and he's saying, be strong, be courageous, put your foot on the neck of the enemy, and listen to me. I will give you weapons to defeat him. He is actually under our feet. Why is he under our feet? Because he's under Jesus' feet. Everything has been given to Jesus, and we are hidden in Christ. And so the authority that Jesus has, we should be operating in. I should be operating in that. When the enemy tries to come against me, I should know that I have weapons, and I'm not by myself in it. And so that's the picture I want us to have as we're going through this moment today. As we turn off what's going on that we brought in, as we stop to kind of, you know, maybe not think too much about what's next, but just right here, be present in the moment. I want you to think of yourselves as commanders, and God's giving you assignments, and he's teaching you today how to use the weapons that he's given you. Now, I have had the honor to be the mom of three beautiful kiddos. Uh, They are mine and Steve's world. We adore them. I, you know, you get to be around one of them, uh, but two of them aren't here. 
as much. And so, you know, any opportunity I have to show pictures of my kids, you know, what mom doesn't do that. So, you know, I'm the one with the mic, so you're going to look at a picture of my kids. So these are my kids, and the beautiful woman in the middle, she is going to be um, baby number four, if you will. Uh, my oldest, Lance, is going to marry her sometime this year, and so she's going to be my daughter-in-law, and I'm so excited. I adore her. Um, I, f- I feel like I've known her my whole life. And so Steve and I, these, these four now are our world. They mean everything to us. And Steve, my relationship with him has been the greatest between him and my kids. They are the greatest gift God has ever given me. They really are. Like, I mean that. Like, it is an answer to my prayers to have this relationship and and this family that I have. Steve and I are actually going to celebrate 26 years of marriage this next week. So, yes, thank you, thank you, thank you. So fun. Um, So, babe, again, I love you, and I really miss you, and I can't wait to see you in a little while. I get to pick him up soon. This next week, we're going to celebrate 26 years, and for the last 26 years of marriage, 24 years of parenting, I have been on mission. I've I've had a purpose to everything that I have done. I've, I've wanted so much for the gospel to be preached in a sense through the atmosphere and the experience that uh, the five of us had in our home. Like that was, that was my mission. I, I wanted that. It was everything to me. And, you know, you can look at, I've had people kind of roll their eyes like your mission was to have kids. Wah, wah. Like you didn't have a bigger dream, Missy. Like who, everybody has kids. Like that's silly. Like you don't have a bigger ambitious goal in life. The goal wasn't to have babies. It was a bigger goal than that. There was something bigger at hand. I remember the moment when I took time, and I'm sure all of us have done this, where I kind of stood there and I looked back. And I can see back generations. So I'm not even talking about what I can physically touch right now. I'm talking like I took time and I looked back. Have you all ever done that? We look back just to see what, what's there. Like, what is it that, you know, there are these pressures that come at me. Why do, why do I struggle with these thoughts? Why is this pressure coming at me that it seems to be habitual? Like, what is that? And I took some time. I was um, 17, 16, 17 years old. I took some time, and I just looked. And I just spent some time looking. And, y'all, I saw Jesus sprinkled all through it, but there were some other things I saw. I saw some things that try to, this very day, try to jump off the fabric of decades ago, centuries ago, I'm not kidding, that try and jump into this very moment and be present with me now. I can look back at it, and I see pride. I can see it. I see it sprinkled in moments of my family line. I I can see people who have a hard time committing to stuff, the follow-through. I I can see that. I see divorce. I I can see it just generation after generation, and it's a, a pattern that I saw. I could see it. I was like, what? What is that? And I, I realized in that moment, as a young woman, stepping towards life, I realized, and I didn't understand to its fullest capacity what it was I was recognizing, but I knew for sure something wasn't right. And as I went on the journey, I realized I've got an enemy that's trying to steal from me, trying to steal from my family, trying to take from me. And I've got an, an opportunity here to make a change. I realized that only Jesus and inviting him in to the story, like really inviting him. Like I've told y'all, I grew up in church. I've done this my whole life. You come come to church and you sing songs and you sit next to each other. And I mean, depending on the flavor, you might get up and hug each other. You might, you know, hide a little, like depending on where it is and what you're doing. But it's kind of the, you know, you come in, you sing a song, you're going to listen to a message and Try and figure out how to apply that to your life. I mean, I've been doing this my whole life. You can come in and do this your entire life. 
it never fully invite Jesus to come and be in the very fabric of your being and make some changes. And that is what I stepped towards as Steve and I were getting married. And I recognized there were these things that, man, that, this pain that I see that is trying to jump into the middle of my life and my world. I don't want that. That was my mission, to see a generation come into my presence and us war. Let's fight against the things that the enemy tries to come and steal from us, take from us. Because Jesus, he's already won. He's, he's given us some things. And I wanted to fight. I wanted to see everything that Jesus has provided I wanted to see it. I don't, I don't want to just read about it. I want to experience it. I want to know him in an intimate way that he's not just promised these things, that it's real and it's for me and it's for my family. And so that was my mission. And it will forever be my, my children, my grandchildren, my great-grandchildren, if Jesus, you know, I think he might come back tomorrow, but that's just me. But if he doesn't, great, 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 great grandchildren, they're going to look back at this moment. And they might see some blips. And they're going to still see some blips in me because I have not arrived. Shocker. I'm sure you all knew that. But there are some things that I have done right. And there are some things that Jesus has got in the middle of our family and started shifting some stuff. And we are no longer, I'm no longer looking this way, y'all. I'm looking this way. I'm looking to my great, 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 great grandchildren. What, will, what must life be like over there as things have continued and, and seeding into my kids? Come on, we're in a war. We're fighting. We're fighting for something. We're fighting for something valuable, and that is to see the kingdom of God expanded and the gospel of Jesus Christ declared through our lives, through our family, through our atmosphere that we create and set, we're declaring the goodness of God. That's what we're doing. What must life be like over there? I'm so excited for them. Not that my life was bad, don't hear me wrong, but there are some things that were stolen back there that I want back. And God does too. And he wants that for you and for me. There are two things that I want more than anything in this life. And it's to stand before my Jesus and hear him say, good job. That was tough. Good job. You stood the course. Good job. You didn't quit. Good job. And I promise you I got moments to quit. And I haven't done it. I want to hear him say good job. I want that more than anything. And I want to see here and now in my lifetime the gospel actually perform what Jesus said he sent it to do. To bring redemption to my life. I want to see it. I want to touch it. I want that more than anything. And I know that you do too. Or you wouldn't be sitting in this room right now. And so I'm believing that God's going to take us to a next step. Give us one more thing. One more nugget. Whatever it is we need to take that step towards seeing him. And what he desires for our lives fulfilled. That's what I'm believing. That these things that have come against us. You know, and as I was talking, you probably could picture certain things in your life. And you're like, yeah, that's been stolen back there, and I want want it back. God wants to give it back to us today. You know, Jesus paid the price for us to have it. I want it. Do you all agree with that? I I want it. If if he said it, I want it. If he didn't say it, well, then let's, let's throw that away. Let's lean into what he did say. I want what he said. I want what he has for us. And one of the best ways we can find out what he says is his word. So look at this with me. And I want you to really, really look at this. Don't skim over this. I know you've heard it before. But lean into this, Psalms 103. Starting at verse 1, it says this, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your iniquities, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from destruction. Come on, who needs that? Who needed that? I needed that. I needed my life to be redeemed and restored. He redeems your life from destruction, who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies. 
who satisfies your mouth with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. This is what we've inherited. This is the promise. This is the gospel. This is what we should be leaning in on. We've got benefits. We've received benefits in the kingdom. Now listen, we didn't inherit an enemy because we became saved. I'm going to let that sit for a second. Because sometimes we think, well, I got saved and now, well, now I got an enemy and I got to fight. No, 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 no. You didn't inherit an enemy because you got saved. You inherited weapons to defeat the enemy that was already there. That's what we've inherited. Come on, is this good news or what? Is that good news? That is good news to me. As I sat and listened to God say that to me, I was like, oh, my goodness. I, I sometimes feel like, well, gosh, you know, Christian life is kind of hard. He's like, hold on a second. Stop. Stop whining and listen to me for a second. It's not. Think back to what it was like before you accepted the peace of God in your life. Think back to what it was like when you were actually in bondage and you have now been set free. Come on. We have weapons to fight an enemy and we get to win. And I don't like talking about the enemy. You know, this is, this is God's house in a sense. Wherever we gather, you claim that as God's house. And so, you know, it's kind of... Like, why, why would you spend time talking about the enemy? Let's talk about God for a second. So I don't want you to think that as I go through this that I'm just talking about the enemy all the time. No, what I'm doing is exposing him. I don't like talking about him, but I do like exposing him and showing people that the thing that you think you're fighting against, it's coming at all of us. You're not, you're not isolated. It's not just you. There is an enemy coming at us, and we've been given weapons to fight him. So we didn't inherit an enemy. We inherited weapons and we're exposing him for who he is today. You know, the word talks about him, calls him Satan or calls him the devil. Uh, depending on translations or where you're reading, you might see it. Him titled that. That's not his name. It's a title. It's, it's the enemy. It's the one that's coming at us. You know, it says that he disguises himself as an angel of light. What does that mean? What does it mean? Well, if you're trying to make a decision, what, you know, the best way, if you're going to take a step, you know, I, I could probably feel my way around here if I didn't have this light, but I, I like it much better when I can see. He tries to, per, per, you know, show himself as the right thing to do, the light, the path to take, listen to his instructions versus God's. He tries, he tries to show himself as light, but he's actually darkness says he roams around like a roaring lion. It doesn't say he is a lion. It says he ro roams around like a roaring lion, lion seeking whom he may devour. But this is what Jesus called him. He called him a thief. This is the title that Jesus gave him. In John 10:10 10, 10, it says the thief, it's talking about the enemy, does not come except he is not your friend, y'all. He only comes for this thing. He comes to steal. He comes to kill, and he comes to destroy. But listen, this is what Jesus says about himself. He came that they may have life, that you and I would have life and have it more abundantly. And the enemy is warring after us. He's warring against us. He's not going to stop. So what is his target? What is it that he's after? Pastor Steve told us last week, it's our heart. He's running after our heart. He wants our heart. He wants our attention, our, our praise, our adoration. He wants us separated from our God. That's his point. That's his purpose. The enemy wants to keep us from truly understanding and believing that Jesus is the only way to abundant life. He's the only way. He doesn't want us to believe that or accept that or live from that place. He doesn't want that. If we do accept that, his next target is to keep us distracted. Okay, let's keep them distracted. Let's keep their eye off the ball in a sense. Let's keep, keep their eyes off of what they should be running towards. Hebrews 12, 2, it says this. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, 
who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. We've got to keep our eyes fixed on Jesus. I'm sure that all of us in this room have accepted Jesus as our Lord and Savior. Let's keep our eyes on him. Who is Jesus? Who is Jesus to you? Think about that for a second. Who is he? He's our savior. He's the redeemer. He's our healer. He's our provider. He's the one in charge. He's the leader. He's the defender. That's who he is. He's our friend. Who is he? Who is he to you? Satan would want nothing more than if you have accepted him to get your eye off of that thing. Like, man, I'm, I don't know how I'm going to pay the bills right now. I don't know how I'm going to do it. I got to get five jobs, and I got to, I don't know what I'm going to do. I guess I just won't eat for the next month. I don't know what I'm going to do. 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 That's getting our eye off of Jesus. Keeping our eye on Jesus. He's, he's our provider. Well, and if I've got a provider, he's got a way. So, Jesus, talk to me. Or says, oh, i got to figure this out on my own. I am the queen of figuring it out on my own. I am. And Jesus is like, stop doing that. Lean in on me and let me talk to you. Keep our eye and our attention on him. When we do that, it exposes the enemy for what he is, a liar. He wants us to think we're defeated and y'all we're not. I came to, de- to remind all of us, I know that you know this in here. But I'm reminding all of us today, come on, we've got help. We've got help. We're not by ourselves in this. So in Ephesians, the Apostle Paul, he eloquently pleads with us, please, will you please have the right perspective? That's how I read Ephesians. I love Ephesians and Revelations are my favorite books because it brings so much attention to who Jesus is. And my relationship to him. And so I love that. And the first five chapters, to me, you may disagree with this. But for me, when I read Ephesians 1 through 5, this is what I keep hearing. It's all about Jesus. It's all about Jesus. It's all about Jesus. It's all about him. Keep your eyes on him. He provided it. He did it. He is the way. You're hidden in him. And when we get to chapter 6, we find out that Jesus, which it's all about him still, as we're fighting alongside him and with him, he has weapons for us to fight the enemy with. The enemy wants to get our attention on the wrong thing so we won't fight the right thing. Now, as a mom, I've got two, you know, I've told you I've got two boys, two men, sorry, grown men. They used to be little boys. And when they were little, listen, I had a beautiful uh, opportunity to have a front row seat at many imaginary battles. There were lots of them. Lots of fighting. I don't know what we're fighting, but we're fighting something. And I also learned that anything to a boy can be a weapon. Anything. Anything's a weapon. When we were planning the church and we would have to uh, set up and tear down a lot, the guys would walk in. My boys would, you know, be carrying a chair and (laughs) like, what are you doing? Put the chair down. Like, everything is a weapon. And I didn't have to teach them how to make gun sounds. Like, they just inherently knew how to make these noises and how to play war. Like, they've always done that. And when they got a little bit bigger, they started playing video games, and they would do this together, and their sister, they would play together. And this is something they still do. Um, Lance being in Georgia and Derek here, they still make it uh, regular, like several times a week. Um, I have a witness in the back. He's saying yes. Several times a week, they get together online and play video games. And I don't get to hear all that I used to hear, the sounds when they all lived in the house with us, you know, when it was on the TV and I'm walking through the living room, like I don't hear the sound of the battle on the TV and listening to them communicate. Like I don't get all of that. All I get is Derek because Derek has his headphones on. And so all I'm hearing, I don't, I don't see what's going on. I don't hear anything other than Derek giving commands, which is very common. 
it doesn't really matter if he's playing video games or not, he's going to be giving commands, but giving commands and yelling all these things, they're communicating with each other. And the other day, as I was walking up the stairs, and I was walking in my room, and I could hear Derek in his room, and he's got a specific sound. I don't even have to ask if he's playing with Lance. I know he's playing with his brother. He has a specific sound that he makes. The, the way he even communicates is different. And he's playing with other friends. I'm like, yeah, no, that's not Lance. But when I hear the specific tone, like, I almost feel like my kids are under one roof again. And it just does something for my heart. So I was walking into my bedroom. Derek's room is right next to mine. And I could hear the sound. I was like, oh, he's in there playing with his brother. And I started hearing these things. Here's, and it's intense, y'all. Like, they are fighting. Like, they are saving mama is what they are doing. They are, they are protecting the land. Like, it's intense. They are yelling. Derek's yelling all these commands. And here's some of the stuff I hear. It's intense. Bro, bro, look to the left. Shoot, shoot, shoot. <laughs> like, do what? So I just stop. I was like, who are these? Bro, behind you. Cut right. I got your back. Happening, so I step into the hallway and I'm just, I'm just listening and I love it. And then all of a sudden, Derek's like, "I'm gonna die! I'm gonna die! I'm gonna die! I'm gonna die! You better get over here! I need you to tur- turn!" And he starts giving him specific degrees <laughs> to turn. I'm like, "What in the world? Like this is awesome! They are in it and they are in it together." And it just hit me. As I, I've listened to them play, I can't tell you how many times I've heard them play. But because of what series we're in the middle of, as I'm preparing for this moment, I would got a little emotional standing there thinking, man, that's what the church should sound like. That should be what we're known for. Not turning our guns at each other. See, I can't even do it. <laughs> that, that isn't what we should be doing. We should be linking arms together, recognizing that we are in a war and we're fighting the same enemy. I promise you, Derek will confirm. I don't even have to ask beforehand. If the two of them were not on the same page... And they were fighting each other. Derek starts yelling, I'm dying, I'm dying, I'm dying. If you don't get over here. And his brother said, well, stop yelling at me. I'm not coming over there. Like, why why are you so intense? I'm not playing with you anymore. Uh, Derek's going to die. It's just going to happen. The game's over. I know. I'm brilliant. (laughs) It's just common sense. But this is what we do in the church. Someone starts yelling out, I'm in pain, I'm in pain. Maybe it's through their actions. Maybe they they don't treat you the way you think they should be, you should be treated. They're disrespectful to you in some way. And instead of recognizing they're crying out, I'm in pain, I'm in pain. Somebody come over here and help me. We turn our gun and shoot. Look at you, like, you can't. I'm guilty. Sometimes I think, I, I don't know, I, I don't know how to do this because I'm, I'm in pain myself. Like, we should be leaning in on each other. We should be able to declare to one another, hey, the enemy, he's to the right, he's to the right. Shoot, shoot, shoot. He's to the left. He's behind you. I got your back. Come on, let's go get him. I'm struggling, y'all. I'm in pain. What do you need? How can we help? That should be the sound of the church us jumping in and fighting together, warring an enemy that's against us all so that we can win. That's what it should be, should be all about. And I know that that is our heart's desire. That's what it, that's what we want. Ephesians 6, 10, it says, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Another translation, it says like this, a final word. And I love that. Here, I got a final word for you. 
Be strong in the Lord, in the power, in his mighty power. Put on all of God's armor so that you will be able to stand against the strategies of the devil. And I know that you have recognized it. I'm uh, making it aware to you that I am noticing that there is a pattern and a strategy to the enemy. And sometimes, though, I forget. And I start battling. I start trying to figure out stuff. And why do, excuse me, why do I feel the way I do? I'm, I feel so anxious right now. Why do, and I start focusing on me instead of on Jesus. And sometimes I forget what's really going on. But, some, but once I snap back to my senses and I realize, come on a second, I got an enemy who is strategizing against me, watching me, watching my husband, watching my three children, watching us, trying to figure out how he can defeat us and get our attention off of Jesus so he can kind of, if nothing else, cause frustration. When, when I recognize that, it blows my mind. Like, like hang on, what, why am I doing this? Why, why am I fighting the way I'm fighting? There is a way to fight and win. Priscilla Shire, she says this, if it's a war he wants, then it's a war he's going to get, and I'm with her. I am not necessarily a, I'm, I'm a pretty laid-back personality. I like to laugh and have fun. I don't take a whole lot of things too seriously. Unless I decide to do something, I want to win. I'm very competitive. And if I'm going to do something, well, we're going to do it all the way, and I'm going to win, or I don't want to play. Like, that's just me. And when I find out that I have been putting effort out there, And spinning my wheels because I'm not listening to my father telling me how to do it. And I'm giving space for the enemy to, if nothing else, frustrate me, give anxiety. It just makes me so angry. And so I want us to fight. The Holy Spirit wants us to fight the right fight. He wants us to fight together so that we can stand firm. Everybody say stand firm. That's what he wants for us. So those around you are not your enemy. We are actually supposed to be connected together to fight the enemy that's coming against all of us. And so these last few minutes, the title of my message today is Defending Our Territory. So let's look at the weapons uh, that are found in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 13 through 17. Let's read this together. Paul is telling us, and he's looking at a soldier, I have been told. Um, I'm sure that they are smart and figured out that that is true, but everything that I have read and researched, um, it seems that Paul wrote this letter um, as he was chained, and he's looking at an example of a soldier. And so with that in mind, kind of thinking of um, a Roman soldier, I'm sure that uh, y'all remember even the picture that Steve used last week kind of picture that. He's looking at this soldier with armor on, and he says this, therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand, stand therefore, having girded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace, Above all, taking the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. In these few verses, we see six weapons that Paul uh, says that we can use to fight our enemy. Now, if you are competitive like me and you like to play sports or games or maybe you just like to go and watch, I'm sure all of us have recognized that there are two positions that it doesn't really matter what sport you're going to play, you're going to play in these two positions, from these two places, offense and defense. That's kind of standard. Um, You're going to see that. And so I want to talk today about defense. Uh, Next Next week, uh, Pastor Steve's going to jump in. He's going to talk to us about offense, which this is kind of perfect. Fits our personalities very well. So he's the challenger is going to come in and teach us how to, you know, lean in and uh, take fight to the enemy. But today I want to talk to us about defending what belongs to us. And I've 
got to enjoy, you know, I'm talking a lot about Derek today. You know, he is the one at home, and so he gets all the attention, and it's wonderful. But he was my football player. And I loved watching uh, Lance play soccer and Amber play soccer and, and volleyball. I loved watching Derek play. He was so good at it. And he would have his helmet on and his shoulder pads. And he played, uh, he was a lineman back in the day. And so he played both sides of the ball, which just simply means he never leaves the field. He just always is out there, which was great for me because I got to watch him play all the whole game. Like he was just out there. He was offense and he was defense. And you know, there's just nothing that, there was never a moment where Derek took off his helmet. Like, well, we're offense now, so I'm going to take my helmet off. I don't need my mouth guard right now because I'm, I'm offense or I'm defense or I need this specific um, part of the equipment for this play and then I'm going to put it on for this. No, it's just always on him. He always had his helmet. He always had his mouth guard. He always had his shoulder pads. He always had his cleats on, always, whether he was playing offense or defense. I, I think I would have a really hard time if the coach would have been, hey, Crowder, those kids aren't hitting very hard. Take your helmet off. Like, excuse me? You're leaving now. You are no longer in charge of my kid. Now, nobody would do that, but we kind of do that. Like, well, life is kind of easy right now. I, th- I got a handle on this. I, th- I think I'll just, you know, I-, I don't have to focus on these things that much anymore. I'm doing pretty good. Practically speaking, when we're just playing a game, we wouldn't do that. But when we're fighting an enemy, come on, we're supposed to have the whole armor on all the time. It's needed all the time, no matter if we are playing offense or defense. We need it. We need it all this time so that we can always stand. So I recognize, like, I don't want anybody walking out of here thinking that I think you just need pieces of the weapons at certain times. No, we need it all the time, always, to be able to stand. But we're just going to look at three that I feel like you can really use these when you're defending something and you're standing in defense of the enemy. So the three weapons for defense for me is breastplate of righteousness, shield of faith, and the helmet of salvation. And so the the breastplate of righteousness, if we look at the at the picture of the of the soldier, if I can say that right, now, I haven't made up any words yet. I, I just caught myself. I didn't do it. Soldier if we look at him, like you can see that the breastplate, it's covering his heart, right? It's covering this area. And naturally speaking, like we know that the heart, it pumps blood through our body. It gives us the nutrients that we need. It's a very important organ. But spiritually speaking, our heart, it's made up of our, our, our mind, our will, and our emotions. That is what uh, the heart is spiritually. And in Proverbs 4.23, it says this, Guard your heart. Guard your heart above all else, for it determines the course of your life. And so I'm hearing Paul telling us as he's looking at this soldier and he's seeing this armor covering the heart, covering something very important. He labels that righteousness. And he's telling us to guard our hearts, guard your mind, guard your will, guard your emotions with righteousness. The righteousness of God. Now, what is righteousness? Well, simply put, it's right standing with God. I'm to guard the seat from which I make all decisions with righteousness, knowing I actually have access to God. Anything that tries to come at me as I'm making decisions, as I'm moving through life, as emotions start, I feel anxious, I feel these things, like I can look at righteousness and let it be a guard to me like I have access to God and I don't have access because of me I have access because of him righteousness is a free gift from God it can't be earned second Corinthians 5 21 it says for he made him who knew no sin, this is talking about Jesus, to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. I never have to experience the, this alone feeling that sometimes I give myself to. I really don't have to feel that way because I've been made right 
I have access. And if I guard my heart, the seat from which I make decisions with righteousness, it'll keep the enemy from coming in and making me make decisions off of emotion or pain or feeling alone or I got to do this real fast. Like, no, I can guard myself with righteousness that comes from God. And this righteousness helps us defend our territory, our heart. And the second one is the shield of faith. If you look at the, at the soldier again, he talks about this shield, and he calls it, he labels it faith. And he says that we can literally quench all the fiery darts of the enemy. He says that we can do that. You know, Jesus told us in Mark uh, to have faith in God. That's what he said to do. And so he labeled the shield faith. And, you know, we, we can have, I can have this. I can have access to this. I can, I can know that I've got it. Like, yeah, Jesus, thank you, thank you very much. I'm just going to, I don't really feel like I'm battling right now. I'm just going to, I'm just going to leave that over there. I don't, I don't really need that. Like, it's fine. Do you, do you think that the enemy is, like, watching to see when you've got it and when you don't? Like, let's, let's, oh, they, they put it down. Attack, attack, attack. Shoot, shoot, shoot. That, that's how he plays his game. That's what he does. So, you know, I've got kiddos and a little illustration for you. Tessa, will you help me? So she is beautiful. She is not an enemy. She's just pretending right now. She's playing a role. So if I have my shield over here, I know about it. I know I have access to it. I've just got it over there. And then the enemy starts throwing stuff at me. Oh, no. Like, what do I do, kids? What should I do? I should pick up the shield. You are so smart. You all have smart parents. Okay, so now I've felt these things coming at me, and he calls it uh, fiery, which to me tells me that it's going to spread quickly. It's going to cause some damage. But, the, but Jesus is my what? He is my healer. And so if I have not done what I should do in defending myself properly, I still don't, ha I don't have to live life with the aftermath of these darts that have hit me. Jesus comes in and he wants to bring wholeness and healness and prepare me so that the next time, huh, look at that. Does that do good, kids? Look at this. Well, I got that one. And, oh, oh, there's more. See, they don't stop coming. They just keep on and on and on. Good job, Tessa. Thank you. Can we thank her? You did so good. Thank you. Yeah, you can just take that with you. We'll pick those up in a minute. I want you all to see these. And kiddos, I want you to see this. Like, they don't have to land and stay. They don't. They don't have to stick. We've been given a weapon. We've been given a shield. And this shield is meant to quench all, not some. And I'm still working on that one. If, can, I, can I just be honest with you? I'm still fighting to truly in myself believe that I can stop all. But that's what the word tells me, that I can quench all the fiery darts of the enemy with faith. And the word tells us that the way faith works is only by one way, and that's through love. It's not self-righteousness. It's not I'm mad enough at the devil, so where's he at? It, it doesn't work like that. It works through love, understanding who we belong to, that I, I am found in him. He's my, he's my provider and my protector. He is my shield. I'm loved and I love him. And I'm just defending off what belongs to God. You know, did you know that I belong to God? Did you know that you belong to him? And it's important to him. It means something to him. He will fight for you and me if we will give him space to do it. He wants to defend us. He has a shield of faith. He wants us to use it. Not sometimes. All the time. You never get to the point where you don't need your shield. He wants us to keep it up. It's a very active thing. It's not passive. And the third one is the helmet of salvation. 
if we look at the picture of the soldier again, he's got something covering his mind. And for me, when I look at this, it makes me think if I'm covering my heart with righteousness and I'm protecting the seat from which I make decisions, the helmet, it's covering the way I think and the way I see. I should think through salvation. I should think through a born again. I'm new. I, I'm, no, I'm not that old person. I'm new. I should think through that perspective. I'm covered. My, my thoughts should be covered, saturated with the understanding. Come on, I got Jesus and I have a Savior who is my friend. And I should see the world around me through the perspective of I'm saved. I've got help. That should be my perspective. And you know, for me, one of the biggest, if, if there was a label that I could tell you that the enemy has tried to label me with, it is rejected. That has been mine. And I don't think I'm the only one. I am not so special that I'm the only one that the enemy has targeted with um, a statement of destruction. I think he does that. Probably with all of us. He's got, there is something that you could look at and, wow, there's a pattern. A, there's this certain thing that no matter what happens, I keep seeing it this way. I keep hearing it this way. That, that has been mine, this, this rejection voice, this every, and it can be so loud at times. It wasn't, but, you know, recently I was sitting in a room with a group of people and this this voice of rejection through experience was just being thrown at me and it was loud and I was like I don't I don't know what to do I don't know what to do right now I don't I don't know what to do with this I'm so uncomfortable and I I just in in myself I didn't even say it out loud I just said father and I don't know how to fully explain it to you but it was like my dad walked up behind me and put his hands on my shoulders. And the very peace of God, I, I wasn't in church. My favorite song wasn't playing. Mood wasn't set just right. Mood was actually set to the opposite. But there he was, my greatest friend. We can always call on him. and He wants to step into these moments with us where the enemy would declare rejected to us. Come on, our Father, he says, accepted. That is what he says to you and to me. He's for us. He is not against us. And we are not alone. There isn't anybody who gets to decide if we are right with God except for me and you. That's it. Because Jesus has already paid the price. We already have access. We just have to accept it. That's it. He's not looking to your ex. He's not looking to your best friend. He's not looking to the one that you think hates you. Hey, should I accept them or not? He looks to Jesus and says, what did they do with the sacrifice? And if the answer is, they've accepted me, like, come home. Like, that's it. There isn't anything that the enemy would want to throw our direction that Jesus doesn't want to come in and bring wholeness and healness healing to our hearts. He wants to do that for us. He's for us. And he wants to equip us to defend the territory, to defend our hearts. Is that good? He wants to do that for us, and he wants to um, teach us how to use these. And so our, my challenge for us this week is to take these three and just ask the Lord about it. How do I take the helmet. For me personally, how do, how do I keep the helmet of salvation on? How, how do I keep righteousness right here guarding me? How do I personally do that? How do I defend myself from the fiery darts of the enemy? How do I build faith? Let's ask the Lord this week as we spend time with him. I know he wants to teach us and show us. He wants to equip us for what he um, has us doing in this right here, right now, and that's ex expressing the word of the gospel to those around us. And I just want to read this over us. It's John three sixteen through 18. It says, For God so loved the world 
that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He who believes in him is not condemned, but he who does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten son. We can defend our territory with these spiritual weapons, y'all. We really can. And we don't have to do it in and of ourselves. He wants to give us help. Can y'all stand with me? If you're watching online, we're so honored that you spent time with us today. And I believe that if you have not accepted Jesus, you haven't become born again. It's as simple as inviting Jesus into your heart. Just asking him, declaring, Jesus, I know that you are the son of God. I believe you were raised from the dead. I want you to come and be my, my Lord and my Savior. Make all things new. And if you pray that prayer, he will be quick right there to do that with you. And we'll believe, we believe that you'll be born again. And so I just want to encourage you, if you've never done that, to do that. And we're so glad that you were with us today. We'll be back next Sunday right here, Highway Community Church. Thank you for watching the Highway YouTube channel. We trust that God spoke to you right where you are. Please take the time to hit the subscribe button to follow us each week. And be sure to share it with a friend. You can support the ministry by heading over to our church website at highwaycommunity.com. Look for the donate tab and help us continue to reach our world with the love of Jesus Christ. Thank you again for watching. God bless and have a wonderful week. Thank you.